to the channel. I got myself a camera. If anyone is wondering what kind I got, I got the Canon G7X and I love this camera. I've used it before in YouTube videos. So I wanted to make sure I got the same camera because I hate having to learn how to navigate a camera. Just, it's not fun. So why not get the same one I already had? Yo, I'm so happy I got a camera. I don't know how to act. Like, it just makes filming so much easier because anyone that does YouTube or a lot, a lot of people that I know that do YouTube, they like to take notes on what they're gonna talk about. And it was very hard for me to do that when I didn't have my phone handy because I was using my phone to make the videos. Also, I think I'm going to start doing videos twice a week. I asked Instagram what they thought about it and a lot of people are saying yes, do two a week. But it is kind of hard because it is time consuming, but I really wanna make it happen for you guys. And I have fun filming and now that I have a camera, I'm gonna have even more fun filming. Before we get into it, my name's Kyle, AKA Prince Kyle, don't forget it. And today I wanted to talk about the comments and questions I get on my TikTok. Anyone that doesn't know, I have a TikTok and I post things on my FTM transition. And most of the time the questions are typical questions and other times they're a little more intrusive, but I'm pretty open and I pretty much answer everyone's questions because that's what I'm online to do. I like to advocate for the community and I like to be transparent about the community so everybody knows the ins and outs behind it because the only way to normalize my community is by exposing everything about us. Because why not? Why not? But yeah, I like answering questions. So at any time, like while I'm going through these, like some of them are kind of like questionable, but I enjoy answering the questions, so don't ever hold back if you have a question. Um, the only way you're gonna learn is if you ask. So, on my handy dandy phone, I have all of the questions that people have asked me throughout my TikTok videos. So we'll just go through them one by one. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to hit a like. And also, if this gets a decent amount of likes, I'll do a part two, because I'm just gonna do a handful of questions first we got so are you a guy but born as a girl yes and no um the easiest way to put it for people that don't understand is yes i was biologically assigned female at birth but i transitioned into a man because my gender has always been male although my sex was female at birth so technically yes i'm a guy that was a girl but i don't like to put it in that context and a lot of us transgender people also don't like putting it in that context we'd rather say that we were assigned female at birth and we transitioned into male because our brains align more with that of a male brain you have surgery for facial hair or was it natural so it's natural through the testosterone we take. We do not, at least I don't know anyone that has surgically gotten facial hair put on. I didn't even know that was a thing. If so, that sounds really painful. I don't know, but anyway, um, when female to male transgender people start hormones, it pretty much just brings us through puberty all over again, but it brings us through a male puberty, so most of us start transitioning after puberty, meaning we have already gone through the female puberty, and now we are re-going through puberty, but in a male way. So we get facial hair, we get an Adam's apple, our voice drops, all that good stuff. So all of the things that happen to men during puberty typically is what will start to happen to transgender female to ma male, because we are men. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't really know what that's supposed to mean, but next question. Genuinely, how old were you when you started questioning things and realizing? Would love to hear about your childhood. So I started questioning myself as early as 
six years old. Not everybody starts to realize at this young, but I was one of those who did. And I, as an adult, realized how important that was because most young children are not thinking about gender and sexuality and sex and all that. But because I was, it just made me realize that much more that like, I really was transgender because it's not something you typically think of at such a young age. Like, little kids don't know anything about that. And for me to have that question in my mind without knowing, that really just showed me that, like, yeah, like, I really am, like, this is really who I am. But again, you can come out as transgender and you can realize it years later. Like, I know of some transgender people who didn't come out until 40 or 45. So it's all different for all different types of people. But for my personal case, I knew very, very young and I just didn't know the terminology until high school. So that's when I started physically transitioning. On my TikTok, I made a video kind of talking about bottom growth. So this is why they asked this question. They said, okay, since you opened this door, I have a question. How far into taking tea did you notice it stopped getting larger? So again, this varies person to person. There are some people who start getting bottom growth as early as the first shot. And then there's some people who will gradually start getting bottom growth as the, as the months go by. And then there's some transgender people who just don't get bottom growth at all. It just varies person to person. And it, I guess it could be genetically, like, I guess it could have to do with genetics. And yeah, but for me personally, I guess I'll let you into my personal life. But for me, it started growing probably after my third shot, which was a good month into transitioning. And it kept kind of gradually growing over time. And I noticed the more I am in my pleasure state, um, it grows a lot during that time too. So anyone that doesn't really know how bottom growth works, you start taking testosterone, your bean area grows a little bit. I'm just gonna call it a bean because I don't like using the word, but you know what I'm talking about. The bean grows a little bit and it can get aroused as well. So it'll grow while you're aroused and then it'll shrink back when you're no longer aroused. Uh, typically, it can grow between one and three inches. Three is giving someone a lot of credit. <laughs> that Again, it just varies person to person how big it actually gets. If you take more testosterone than you should, what will happen to the body? So, testosterone and hormones in general, it's really a science. And that's why we have um, like yearly checkups to check our testosterone levels because you don't want it too high and you don't want it too low. So if it's too low, then that's just obvious. You're just not getting enough in your body and all of the physical changes are not going to happen the way they should be if your levels were normal. normal. And then if your levels are too high, because it's a science, it can revert back into estrogen. Anyone that doesn't know what estrogen is, estrogen is the female hormone and testosterone is the male hormone so if you have too much testosterone it can revert right back into estrogen which means again your changes would not be working properly and you wouldn't see the results that you should be seeing so that is why every six months to a year we go to our doctor and get our levels checked to make sure that everything is smooth sailing uh so you was a woman that transformed to like men so you was a woman that transformed to a man to like men. That's what I meant to say. This was another TikTok I made. Every now and then I like to talk about how I'm pansexual because again, I don't know why, but a lot of people just can't get it in their mind that trans men can still like men and trans women can still like women. They don't realize that trans men can still be gay and they don't realize that trans women can still be lesbian. They just, they don't get it. So whenever I talk about being pansexual and still being interested in interested in different types of people, I get comments like this where it's like, well, what was the point of transitioning if you're still gonna like men? Like, what was the point of becoming a man to still like men? And it's like, because 
sexuality and identity are two different things. Two different things. Well, just because I transitioned into a man does not mean I can no longer like men. That's just not how it works. Trans men can still be gay. Trans women can still be lesbians. Is it helpful to go through therapy and do you continue to go after the transition? I think going to therapy for anything is extremely ideal. Like I believe everyone should be going to therapy no matter what. Yeah, I would say for me it helped tremendously. It was it gave me a place to speak about my transition to somebody I didn't know rather than to family and friends because I don't like to open up to family and friends. So it just kind of gave me like an outside party to talk to. And no, I personally do not go to therapy anymore for my transition. I only went long enough to get my recommendation letter and then after that I stopped. How long did it take from going to therapy to get your recommendation letter? So it didn't take me long at all. Like it literally took me like two or three sessions, which was in the length of maybe two months because I would have a session every other week, I think. So I was there long enough to get my recommendation letter and then I was out of there. Again, it was helpful to go, but once I got that recommendation letter, I was on my way. I didn't need to talk about anything anymore. I just wanted to say, this is what I am. This is how I feel. Now give me my letter. <laughs> it can also be different for everybody. Like some people, it may take them like a couple months and then others, it could take them one session. It really just depends on your therapist and when they think you're ready. If I ever found out I was dating a trans man, I'd on site. Okay. Well, I feel threatened. If anyone is wondering why you don't out your trans friends and why us as trans people get offended when you out us, this, this is a perfect example. Outing us can be extremely dangerous. People like this is why we don't feel safe to just tell anybody we're trans because there are crazy people out there who would actually do this. So yeah, don't out your trans friends. This one. <laughs> With all due respect, do you have a penis or a vagina? I love the respect you had behind this. Like I know it was extremely, extremely innocent, but I'm gonna answer it because I am an open book and because I don't really care, but I do want you to know Never just ask a random transgender person what they have. It is just extremely inappropriate. And there's just like, we just never understand why it's such a deep need to know. Like I get the curiosity, but just genuinely think about it. Think if someone were to ask you what body parts you have or how big your body part is or just anything very intrusive about your body part especially when you don't know the person it just comes off very awkward but again i'm using this platform to this i'm using this platform to be very open so i don't mind answering your questions so i technically still have the body part that i was given at birth <laughs> given at birth but i also have bottom growth so i kind of got a little bit of both but my main thing is what I had at birth. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. The more support I get from you guys, the more videos I can continue to make and the better I can get at them. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.